CPU overclocking in the NVIDIA control panel slash Intune. I will be following this video up with a GPU as in a video overclocking video after this. So this video is for ZXX the one XXZ who wanted to know how to do this and there's a lot of great great advantages to doing this in the NVIDIA control panel. Now the other way you would overclock your, your CPU, not the GPU of course, but the CPU is by going into the BIOS. Now the BIOS is, when your computer first turns on, the BIOS says, okay, do I have my arms and legs, do I have my limbs, do I have a video card, do I have a hard drive, you know, it, it figures out how everything works. If you ever want to see what a BIOS looks like, just go to Google Images, type in BIOS, B-I-O-S. They're mostly blue and some of them are spiffy looking depending on what motherboard you have. Anyway, we're not going to go in the BIOS. We're strictly going to remain at the NVIDIA control panel. What we will and what we won't do. There are two parts to overclocking, and I'm only going to be covering the safe part of overclocking. The safe part of overclocking is FSB overclocking only. Now, I have a locked multiplier on mine, and the way you overclock is by increasing the FSB, the front side bus frequency, versus uh, and that is multiplied by the C CPU's multiplier. When, let's say you have an AMD 3500, 3600, 3700, or 3800, each of those speeds have a locked maximum multiplier. You can decrease the multiplier, but you can't increase it beyond its maximum. Intel um, Extreme Editions and the AMD Black Box Edition CPUs as well as the FX editions for the AMD CPUs have unlocked multipliers, but we're not going to be dealing with those. So this is a regular overclock. Now, the second part to overclocking is uh, when you overclock, you're increasing the frequency, which means all, all, the, all that is zeros and ones going through the CPU, which are represented by electrons. The electrons, you need more electrons when you increase the frequency. If you overclock your CPU to a certain extent you need to stabilize the amount of electricity going through the CPU. Therefore, um, what, what happens is um, you have to start increasing the, the voltage. However, if you increase the voltage too much, blah blah blah, you can shorten the life of the CPU and you can pretty much kill the computer. Now I'm not going to cover voltage, I'm not saying I, if you mess around with the voltage on your computer you're liable yourself I have nothing to do with it now the, the great safety net with the NVIDIA control panel is is the way I'm going to be showing you to do this is that if, you, if your computer free, free, bleh, if your computer freezes or locks up reboot and everything will be back to normal so, so this is not through the BIOS if you did this through the BIOS You'd have to know how to clear the CMOS, which is a jumper, or you could just pop the battery. But we're not going to be doing that because I don't have a second system to show you guys, and systems are all different. So anyway, so let me get here to the default here. And here we go. So inside the NVIDIA control panel, we want to go under performance, adjust motherboard settings. This is where all the magic happens. Okay, this is my CPU multiplier. I have an AMD Optron 185 while I'm shooting this video, which has a, ma a maximum multiplier of 13. The FSB by default is 200. 200 times 13 equals 2.6 megahertz, uh, 2600 2, megahertz or 2.6 gigahertz. Okay, when I in, when I increase this, now obviously I could drag this all the way to the end, and then my system will lock up. I, I guarantee it. There's no way I could do I could do anything like that, because that would require voltage, um, added voltage to stabilize this, and I'm not personally going to be doing anything at voltage. So I'm going to increase this. One megahertz, and as you can see, 
if I apply this, and I haven't applied it yet, it tells me that I'll overclock the, C the CPU by 13 megahertz. So I'm going to hit apply. And now I'm running at 2613 megahertz. So I'm going to open up CPU Z. And I'll open up in a second here. And here we go. So CPU Z tells me my bus speed is 201.3 megahertz, and I'm hitting 217.3.5. I I don't have a dual monitor set up here, so just got to I can drag this all the way up to 219. So I just overclocked my CPU by 147 megahertz. I'm sorry, 247 megahertz. Man, I can't do math. Okay, so there we go. Now if I overclock this anymore the system will lock up. Now, how? I'm not going to go into voltage again, and it'd be nice if the camera would stay. So I'm not going to go into voltage, but that's how how to do it. Now, there are limitations. Um, if you have um, a very high, highly clocked CPU to begin with, um, you might need to, to use voltage to stabilize it at at something lower than 219. I don't know. I haven't tried messing with high-end high CPUs for, eight, for other platforms. Um, for example, I had a 2.26 gigahertz Pentium 4, which I could overclock to about 2.4, uh, just over 2.4 before. So most people should get roughly about 100 to 200 megahertz overclock. You might get somewhere in between. You might get a little bit more than 200 megahertz using the FSB. Remember, if your computer locks up, you should be doing this, you should be increasing your FSB by only one megahertz, applying it, and seeing if everything keeps running. It's, remember the number that you have. I remembered offhand that I can go up to 219. I'm not sure if I can go to 220 offhand because I don't remember. And frankly, I don't need to overclock that much because usually I'm working in Notepad because I'm a web designer. So, and, uh, so the next video I'm going to shoot is for Aha, video cards, which work a little bit differently because I have two of them, obviously only one hooked up right now, but uh, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get a, figure out your um, stability issues there. Um, if you want to read up about CPU voltage, which I do not recommend doing this, this is all on your own merits, you could fry your motherboard, you could fry your RAM, your CPU, or everything. Um, so I don't really recommend doing it unless you have the money to burn, or you have uh, secondary computer parts to replace pretty much everything in your computer in case you do burn out your system. So, but if um, the secret with voltage, if anyone decides to read up is once you hit your maximum FSB is to slightly increase the default voltage of the CPU by the most minimal increment you can and then you should be able to increase your uh, your FSB a little bit more and whatnot so that's how that works but I'm not going to show you guys how to do that. I'm just letting you know that's what I'm aware of at my personal maximum ability of overclocking. Of course, um, if you want extreme overclocking, people will use like liquid nitrogen to, in, well, liquid cooling and, of course, liquid nitrogen to cool their CPUs. But, I mean, those people have like $100,000 to burn or something. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching the NVIDIA Control Panel CPU Overclock Guide. And... Um, Remember, keep everything in, uh, in mind what I said, and most importantly, over, only overclock your CPU by 1 megahertz increments. Write down what is stable, and if anything crashes, when you get back your system back up and running, overclock only to the highest stable FSB overclock. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the G.
CPU overclocking guide.